Well, Ian, here you are early, early in your career, you know, three fights in, International Fight Week. I mean, the, the biggest event of the year. I guess, what's, what's the feel like for you right now? It's fucking awesome to be here. It's a pleasure. Obviously, it's exciting. I've always been a fan, and the fact that I've, my dream has been to fight in Vegas. You give me the biggest fight you possibly could in Vegas in International Fight Week, and with a card that's as stacked as it is, I mean, from top to bottom, it's just highly entertaining. So I'm looking forward to it being a fight card that people are going to remember and being part of that myself and going in there and putting on a performance that everyone remembers. It's going to be awesome. What'd you take out of your last fight, man? Obviously a victory, but like, there was some criticism, but I wonder sometimes if it's like, if you don't knock somebody out in two minutes, like you failed or, or something. Like, what do, you, what do you make of that? So what happened at the end of the fight? My hand got raised. That's the main thing. That is it. R regardless of my performance or what happens, whether I knock him out, whether I sub him, whether it's a fucking war, or whether I dominate the fight, as long as my hand gets raised, I've done my job. That is my job, is to go out there and win. It's put on a show and win. And I, I won. I won very convincingly. There, was like, there wasn't that any damage that I took. It was dominant. He parked the bus a little bit. He didn't kind of give me any... He didn't fight back nearly. He, he, he made it look like he was fighting. He just walked me down. It wasn't as exciting as I was hoping for. Um, and I left there dissatisfied. dissatisfied. Oh, like I did. But at the end of the day, I did my job well. I won the fight. And then I can go, OK, what do I do now if that happens again? How do I overcome that? How do, if someone's going to pack the bus, how do I do that? I need to be more aggressive. I need to be the offensive striker as opposed to kind of wait and bait him out a little bit. I need to put it on him and fucking make him, make him worried. Um, and it's part of the process. I mean, you can win when you, like, win and learn. Like, there is no other way. Like, you, I've only won in my career, and I've learned so fucking much. Um, and that's what I'm going to continue to do. I'm going to continue to grow, continue to learn, and no matter what happens in the cage, once I come out there victorious, I've done my job right, and I'm happy with myself in getting that win. But the performance itself, they can always be better. I mean, I'm never going to sit there and say, ah, that was perfect. And if I did, then we need to improve on that again. So it's just constant evolution, constant growth. And yeah, you are right. We, we do leave there. And I know I can speak for myself, but I, I know other fighters feel this. But like, just because we won doesn't mean we're happy. I emailed Sean Shelby a couple, a couple days, maybe a week after that fight, and said, I want to get in there straight away again. I'm not happy. I'm, I'm kind of pissed off with that, like, that fight. I didn't get what I wanted, like, m myself. Like, I didn't feel happy with that performance, with that fight. And then he said July 2nd, and I was ready to cut weight on, on two weeks, I told him. So, yeah, here we are. Now we have July 2nd. That's, that's the main thing in my mind from now on. I like it. What do you think of Gabe as an opponent? Do you think he's going to be the kind of guy that gives you the fight that you wanted last time? Yeah, I do. I actually, because he's... He's small and he's stocky, so that initially straight away means he's going to have to close the distance and kind of be more aggressive than I am. He can't stand on the outside and, and, and pick me apart. It's not possible. He can't reach me. So he has to be aggressive. Um, his style is I'll, I'll stand and brawl and kind of mix it up with like switching stances, which is great, cool, sweet, happy days, bring it on. But when you meet me in the middle and you try rush, I'm going to fucking stand there, plant my feet, swing hard and see who hits harder because I know who it's going to be. And that's what I'm looking forward to. I think he will bring it. I don't think this is going to be a, an easy fight in regards to that. I know he's going to be ready. He's going to be game. He's coming off two wins. He'll be confident. Great, cool, sweet. I don't want people coming off losses. I want people when they're happy. I want people when they think they're that fucking good. And then I go in there and I shut them down. And I just say, I'm better. I'm better than you. And I want to prove that. And that's what I'm going to keep doing my entire career. It's just proving that I am the best. And I don't need to be better than anyone else in the world except the guy that stood across the cage from me that night. And that's it. Last thing for me, the goal here, I mean, obviously massive opportunity, massive card, yeah. fighting in Vegas. So because of that, I mean, do you want to go in there and, and punctuate it with something special that gets people talking? Or is it just, at the end of the night, let's make sure we get the hand raised? Every single fight that I've ever been on, I've always been the person that people talk about. And that is always what I want. And whether it be all positive, like the last one, everyone was talking about me. But they were saying, oh, well, it was a decision. It wasn't a knockout. It doesn't matter. You're still talking about me. Now, you know that any press is good press. Now I go in there with a point to prove. It's like, I am that fucking good. I am the next big thing. I am the fucking future. And my skill set will show up. And when I stand there and I knock his ass out, that's all that will matter is that I came out victorious again and I did what I said I was going to do. I go out there and win. 10-0. And back here to your left. 
How you doing, sir? Hey, bro. How are you? You good? I'm doing great. Um, obviously, another big card here, another big opportunity for you. But Gabe was in here earlier, and he was asked to sort of give his assessment of you, and he said, "You're a little big headed, a can little I... little big for your britches at times." Yeah. Can I and... guess what he said? He's that... gonna find his way to beat me. He said that he thinks I'm better than I am. Yep. Yeah, he said all these things. I've heard that before so many times. Everybody says it. it's all they have to cling on to. People say, oh, I think I'm going to be the guy to take his O. He thinks he's better. I think he thinks he's better than he is. It's like, no, no, that's not the case. It's like, I, I'm, I want him to feel like that. I want him because that means he's coming here with confidence and he thinks he can beat me. I want the best Gabe Green that we've seen so that when he leaves that cage and he's lost and I'm standing there above him, there's no, there's no excuses. But it's like, I've heard it so many times, man, and I'll always hear it in my career because it's going to continue to be Ian Gary wins. He's 10-0, 11-0, 12-0. It's the same stuff. Yeah, the one thing that really stood out is that he thinks you, have a, you just have a really big head about yourself. But in fighting, is that such a bad thing to, to have sort of a big head and, and have that confidence? A big head in what way? Because I have a confidence about my skill set. And when you, when you ask me about confidence i've had nine fights and i've won nine times there's a reason i'm on three numbered cards in a row there's a reason that the ufc are pushing pushing me it's because they know how good i am they can see it they see when i when i stand up here and i talk i, I have confidence it's in me like it's not my fault that people don't have as much confidence as i do and they think it's cockiness or arrogance it's i have an un like an unapologetic self-belief and i just want to show the world my skill set and that's it and fine, so what if he thinks of a big head? So like he's got a fucking massive head and that's gonna make a, have you seen the size of it? It's like a basketball. So I just gotta put my fucking fist through his face and see who wins then. But look, I no disrespect to him, he can think that. Like I, I, I like that he says that. Let's see what happens. Saturday night is the, is the only thing that matters to me. And the last thing for me, that fight in Jacksonville, going the distance, I know you weren't overly thrilled with the performance overall, you want to get right back in there, but mm -hmm. in some respects, is that the best thing that could have happened to you, was having a fight like that? Uh, no, the best thing that would have happened is I'd spark him and then go out and have a good time um, and get some pizza. Um, but it's definitely experience, and you can never take away from gaining experience, no matter what it is, and considering I went 15 minutes, was fresh as a daisy after the 15 minutes, and I didn't really get touched. It's, um, it's always nice to kind of build that confidence and have that time in the cage because that's, it's priceless, really. So, yeah, you can only take that. Ian, over here on the, uh, on, I guess you're right. Um, just curious, your, your camp at Sanford, who did you mainly get to work with this time around uh, going into the fight? Because, I mean, there's, your team's had a lot of momentum uh, as of late. Yeah, so there's a, obviously, look, you look at the, the guys in Sanford, it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, someone I did spend a lot of time with was uh, Michael Johnson. Um, my nutritionist pointed out that he has the ex he's the exact same height and reach as Gabe, and MJ has got some of the fastest hands that we've seen. Like when that guy puts a combination together, it's fucking it's blisteringly quick. Mm -hmm. um, and he's got a he's like he's a dog. He's ruthless. He's not afraid to come forward. He said to me recently, he said, "If you hit me, I know you're open somewhere." He's like, "So I'll take one to give four back," and I, I like that a lot. Um, so I put a lot of work in with him. And uh, Jason Jackson, um, he's an awesome fighter. Um, I think he's one of the best welterweights in the world. I keep telling him to have the attitude of, you are literally the best welterweight in the world. Like, I say to him, I walk up to him, I go, who's the best welterweight in the world? And he's like, you are. I'm like, fucking tell me you are. I'm like, because you are. I was like, I want to be like you. I want, like, me and my wife sit there and say, like, he is the best. Like, he is the, like, a version of me in the future. Like, he's just so smart and calculated, and he's awesome. So I'm just working with guys like that, and I enjoy every second of it. And Jason's a pretty positive guy, too, in the gym. I don't think you ever see him break a smile. Just how, how important is that to have a guy like that in the gym when maybe you're not having a great day and it'll put you in a good mood? Yeah, both of them are just, they're funny. Like, watching those two spar is, near, is, is more entertaining than any, any fight you'll ever see, because they talk so much shit. They're such good friends, and they, like, they, they help each other, but it's a different, it's a different feeling, it's a different bond. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's so valuable having teammates like that, that come in there and can always like pick you up and um, just, just bring good energy, and that's what it is. It's bring knowledge and good energy, and everyone wants to grow together. So we all have the same goals at the end of the day. We all want to be victorious and have a legacy, and 
whether it's money, whether it's fame, whether it's just success, legacy, we all just want to get into the cage and fight and, and win. That's it. And last one for me, what did you make of Shavkat Rachmanov's win? Last a really dominant performance. Shavkat's a savage. Um, he's, re he's just so well-rounded. Like, doing rounds with him in the gym, it's, it's obviously a pleasure. Like, he's so good. Um, and, yeah, he's, he's just... He deserves all the hype. I mean, the only reason he isn't more hyped than he is is because of his lack of English. That's it. If he could sit up here and talk like me, he'd be one of the top in the world because he'd be able to hype himself up. But he doesn't. And I like the fact that he sits there and he just goes, I'm going to let my performances do it. He's like, it, when you take media and like all this media obligations out of it, and you take it back to kind of the, like the purity of the sport or the purity of fighting. It's like, let your fighting talk. And he's going, oh, I can't speak great English, so I'm just going to literally let my performances do it. And that's brilliant. The fact that he's garnered so much respect in the game because of that, it's, it's so impressive. And I just, I, yeah, I can't wait to see what's next for him. Hey, Ian, right back here. Hey, how are you? Good? I'm doing pretty good. Can you see me? Yes, I can see you. <laughs> Uh, Ian, uh, I want to ask you, uh, not just a married man, but going to be a family man, as you yes. announced after your last fight. Are the motivations in training camp for these fights different, knowing it's not just about you or even just your wife, but that it is going to be, you know, for the next generation and for your son or daughter? I would, so it's a boy, just to clarify. It's a, it's a little boy. Um, uh, but um, I wouldn't say the motivation. I don't fight for my family. I fight for myself. I fight because I love fighting. I compete because I love competition. Um, my family, I obviously want to have, like, I, my favorite thing about fighting is I, I'm going to use it to travel the world. Like, when you look at Florida, when you look at New York, when you look at Vegas, it's like, I'm able to go to these amazing places and have, like, different cultures, different people, surround myself with some of the best in the world of what we do. And, just enjoy the process, enjoy the travel, enjoy the freedom, and the fact that I get to do it with my family so close by my side is going to be awesome. So the motivation hasn't changed, but um, my, my life will be different after this in regards to, like, I will have a little boy that is going to depend on me, that I have to feed and have to, to look after and help become his own man, and I'm just excited for that. I think that's that in and of itself is the coolest thing I think a man can do is to help raise his son and bring him to be a successful, happy man himself. And I just, I just want to be the best dad I can as well. So everything I do in life, I want to be the best dad. I don't want to be average at anything. I don't want to not succeed in the best way I possibly can. And maybe that's why I come across as fucking too confident in anything. It's like, because I want to be the best at everything I do. I want to be the best dad. I want to have the happiest family. And I think that's just... I think that's a good way, to, a good attitude to have in life. I mean, we only have one ride, in, one ride on this trip. We might as well make it happen. To follow up on something that you just said, um, you know, obviously with the UFC, especially in recent months now, traveling around the world and getting back out. But what would it mean to you personally to go back to Ireland under the UFC banner? So that's something I've been saying all week. People have been saying, what happens when you go 3-0 and in the UFC? What happens when you, you remain 10-0 and undefeated? What happens then? What's next? Obviously, I have a baby on the way, and that, that deserves every bit of attention and respect for my wife and for my baby, so I can, I can make sure everything is good with them. But I don't see why we couldn't, we couldn't have a, a UFC Dublin. I don't see why we couldn't kind of light that fire behind the Irish MMA again. There's only me and Connor in, in, in um, the UFC from Ireland that are active, and the return of him, whether it be late this year, early next year, I think it'd be nice to kind of just light that fire again and get everyone excited. So that, that's what I'd like. That'd be my dream now as the UFC Dublin. My final question, just what kind of stuff did you pick up from working with Boss Rudin and Wonderboy with the Karate Combat guys? Oh, dude, Bass and Wonderboy are unbelievable. Obviously, I'm a striker. I love striking. I love everything about it. It's like a chess game. And to be able to sit there and speak to one of the best strikers that have ever been in the UFC and Stephen Wonderboy Thompson is, is phenomenal. To just even get a relationship with him that we can now sit there and talk and like potentially meet up and train together. I, I invite him to my house um, this week to see if he wanted to come over and train. I just He's a great energy. And the same with Baz. You're, you're literally talking about a UFC Hall of Famer who has so much knowledge that he could pass through. And he was sat there and he said, give me one week with you. 
He was like, give me one week and we can, have, we, can, we can add so many things to your game. And I said, I'm in, let me know. Let me know when you've moved house and I'll come out to Texas and we'll do some stuff together. Thank you. Ian, over here in the same spot. Hey, dude, how are you? Good, you? Good, man. So there's a thrilling bout over the weekend at Cage Warriors and Reese McKee won the welterweight title that you had vacated last mm -hmm. year. Did you get a chance to see that fight and what do you make of Reese's abilities? I did get a chance. I specifically sat in a taxi and didn't move until the fight was finished. Um, it was a great fight. Um, I, I like both lads. I think both lads are very good. Um, I think Reese obviously had it hard when he got signed to the UFC on short notice and was put in there with Hamza. It's, it's not a nice debut to have, I would say, for someone, especially on short notice. Even if you had a camp, it would still be dirty. Um, but I think Reese just has the attitude of, all right, it didn't go well the first time around. That doesn't mean it's not impossible to kind of get back down to improve. I mean, there's always going to be a second chance if you work hard enough for it. And I think he's, he's, he's obviously, he got dropped from the UFC. He's gone back. He's learned. He's grown. And now he's got the Cage Warriors title. And I wish him nothing but success. You know, if we can add another Irishman to the UFC roster, that'd be fucking insane. And again, another reason for UFC Dublin, get, get, get more guys on the card. So, yeah, it was a great fight, and it was a great performance and a great finish from him, so I'm happy for him. Thanks, Ian. Appreciate it, man. We good? Happy days. Appreciate your time, as always. Have a great week, guys.